Hello, friends. Hello. Welcome to Broadcast Fifteen Point One. It's our fifteenth season. Uh, My it, life. It's the Picast. It's the Picast or the Picast, as you're not letting me call it. No, boo, because he's not called Captain Picard, you idiot. <sighs> Oh, the missed, Picast. Uh, missed opportunity, but there no. we go. So this is um, recording just a, a couple of days after it was released in this country. Mm. And uh, I've had a chance to watch it twice. I watched it last night and wasn't impressed, but that's because I was in a bad mood, basically. And I oh. kind of knew it at the time. I was like, thinking, yeah, I'm not in the right frame of mind for this. Having watched it a second time, liked it a lot more. It's not without its faults, but it's not bad, not bad. Interested more me more the second time as well, interestingly. And there's some wonderful visuals. Yeah. Just incredible what they can do on a TV budget these days. But there we go. Series lays its cards on the table. See what I did there? Uh-huh. Open card and data. Yeah. Bring in uh, the, the glorious looking Enterprise D. Yes. Oh, oh that's fantastic. Looks that. shiny. Mm, beautifully shiny. Uh, well, not shot, obviously, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Realised? Realised, yes. And uh, likewise, the Temp Forward looks really nice as well. I presume yeah. most of that's a virtual set because surely they didn't build that yeah, entire set I just for those two people so. playing card games. No. Yeah, it's it's Picard and Data anyway. And uh, they're playing some blooming card game, which is well in keeping, isn't it? Let's yeah. face it. Data rather bizarrely is in the first contact uniform, so they should really be on the E. But I suppose it's all excused by the fact this is all in Picard's mind. It's a dream and it's, things. Yeah, so it'll... Continuity gets a bit messed up in a dream anyway, doesn't it? So that's yeah. fine. Mars explodes out the window, and Picard wakes up with his cute pooch called number one. Oh, I like that. Bless. <laughs> As I say, sets the cards to the table. He obviously doesn't want those days to have ended. All yeah. oh, right, that's back. Well, he's back doing a new series. Okay. Yeah. Cut to a young couple chatting in a cool-looking future Boston. No cheers in sight, sadly, but I'm sure it's there somewhere. Daft Punk beam in, murderize the dude, and try and kidnap uh, the woman. But she activates and goes all Matrix on them. Yes, which is cool. I like the bloke. He had eyes that were different. I think they went the other way or yeah. something. How he, I, mm-hmm. I just like that. It's a cool-looking alien. Mm, yep. Uh, and then she sees Picard in her mind. Ooh, yeah. what's going on? Then we get the theme, which I'm afraid I'm not impressed with. It's very insipid. and. Yeah, I can't mm. remember it. I, I, would, I preferred if they'd gone with Last of Summer Wine, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Half tempted to make that the theme tune to this podcast, but yeah, people are going to get very confused if I do that, aren't they? <laughs> Particularly people not from this country that wouldn't know Last of the Summer Wine if it turned up in a bathtub at their front door. But yeah. anyway, Google it, folks. Or not. Yeah, if you've got a life, possibly not. <laughs> Spe- anyway, speaking of Last of the Summer Wine, cut to Picard on the vineyard with his cute pooch, and you go- you're wondering whether this is ever going to go anywhere in particular. Well, the thing is, what I kept thinking, bearing in mind that you've had... You've had this mashup in his mind, haven't you, of Data in one uniform, but it's on the D, and they're playing cards, and then Mars blows up, and then they're in the vineyard. I just kept thinking of all good things, and I kept thinking of, <laughs> you know, is is this the whatever it was disease? You know, where he gets all mixed up. Oh yeah. Do you know the disease he had that I can't remember what it was, or syndrome, or something? Mm, it was, but didn't it turn out to be Q after all in the end anyway? It has been a little while now, hasn't it, since we've seen all good things, but anyway. So that that's immediately that's what I thought, is ah. that they're in the vineyard and he's, he's, his brain's mushing everything together. And also he was walking with a stick, and except then later he isn't. I don't understand that, but anyway, he was walking with a stick. So mm, good point. So I'm thinking, you know, he's he's not well. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's fair to say Patrick Stewart has clearly aged. At one time, he never seemed to age at all. Uh, Nat's no longer the case. Not under substan- I mean, you know, oh, what a surprise. Ancient man looks ancient. But, you know, we, we never noticed before, but now, now we do, rather. And he's got, he kind of shakes and you think, oh, I know it's been renewed for a second season, but sure, just don't tempt fate, folks. Oh, he's not that old. He's 75, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's still a reasonable age to be, still be working in Hollywood, isn't it, Guy? That's... Yeah, plenty of people continue to their 80. Uh-huh. Um, some beyond that, but certainly to their 80 if, if they want to. Mm-hmm. But... I think in terms of the age, though, one of the one of the reasons he didn't seem to age is because the way 
you think of men aging in particular is when they lose their hair. <laughs> and of course, because of his alopecia, he's been bald for a very long time and therefore didn't really look much different for a very long time. And then he hasn't been on our screens for a while. Is it 20 years since Nemesis, something like that? Well, he's been in other stuff, though, hasn't he? I mean, all right, he's not been Picard for 20 years, but he's been in X-Men films. I mean, he was in that uh, Wolverine one not so long ago. Yeah, but A, they make, you say not so long ago, that was a little while back. Um, no, don't go telling me that was like 10 years ago or something uh, Logan came out, because I will get very depressed. Right, to, to <laughs> Indiver while you carry on. Okay. <laughs> well, I was going to... So what I was going to say is that the only way you really notice someone's age if they if they have no hair really is wrinkles which are now more prominent in his neck liver spots which I'm not aware of any that he's got well they would be covered up by makeup but they would be covered up by makeup and the fact the voice is slower that's what I'm noticing is mm. a slower slower voice well, it was the shakes that I noticed 2017 come on that's only okay. three years ago now you say that but yeah but is that the character having the shakes rather than the actor having the I, shakes I, I, well anyway who knows perhaps it's acting on his part yeah no this. I'm just wondering if it is mm. anyway he uh, speaks to his doggy in French which is quite sweet mm. Uh, but doesn't bother for French here the rest of the time because then he's speaking to Romulans and maybe that would confuse them, especially since one of them has an Irish accent. Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we seem to be watching it. You know, in Doctor Who, every planet has a north, so in Star Trek, clearly every planet has an island. Either that or she's, a, uh, you know, a result of an unholy match between a Romulan and one of those Brigloidy oh, from yeah. uh, Up the Long Ladder. <laughs> Sorry to have brought that one up. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Laris, by the way, who's played by Orla Brady. Uh, I know her. Yeah, that she name. was in she was in Doctor Who recently, relatively recently in oh. the time of Do- the time of the Doctor. Uh, she was also in an episode of Vicar of Dibley, Casualty and the Bill, to name just a few mm. British series. So yes, we've we've seen her around, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Picard is then he's got, having an interview, so he gets dressed in Dickensian garb for some reason. Something's happened very strange with fashion in this period for some reason. Yeah. But there we go, they're going back in time. Maybe it was left over from his run as Scrooge. That's my my suspicion. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, humbug. We learn from his very rude interviewer, so some things don't change, eh? Uh, that he made Admiral before retiring. It's apparently the anniversary of the supernova that wiped out Romulus, which would have been nice to have shown a bit more. I mean, I think there was some vague stuff going on in the yeah. background, but it would have been nice to have had some sort of flashback because actually this interview scene I found a bit clunky as a means of trying to get us up to speed. I would have rather them do something else that would involve us actually seeing these events, but... Maybe they didn't have the money. I think the thing that gets me as well is in the Star Trek universe, in the, I'm not sure about Discovery, but certainly in the later ones, they didn't have telly. And they yes, did, yeah, you, television did, had ceased, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, good uh, point. And the Whoops. idea of news... It's come back. <laughs> it wasn't a thing, and it seems very American now news interviews not something that might be happening that far into the future. For me, it took me out of it. Yes, it didn't feel like Trek. You're no, right. yeah. it took me out of it, that whole whole thing. Yeah. And in a different series, you could, I think, have perhaps used the same method, the same gimmick, mm. but not. it doesn't fit for Star Trek at all. Why yeah. have they suddenly reinvented telly? Weird. Particularly when they've got holodecks and holosuites and stuff. Do you know what I mean? I don't... Yeah. Whereas I, I don't know whether or not they have news and telly in Discovery, but, of course, Discovery is set... Pre- it's earlier, so yeah. That, so it that wouldn't would matter right. if they did. They, I mean, they definitely have something still in Generations, <clears throat> isn't it? When they launch the B, because there are all those camera crews on board it. Yeah, so it's but still they have a thing then. They have cameras and recording and stuff though, because you see them. They've got all those Harry Potter style photos in frames that move and things mm-hmm. on their desks. Yeah, but those were clearly like news news reporters. Yeah, the launch of the but week. but not necessarily. I mean, how you get your news, I don't I don't know. But not there was no implication. I didn't think in generations that there was telly, just that there was news. Do, mm. do you see what I mean? All right. I, I I don't know, but it doesn't work. Anyway, one of the things they sort of I say slightly clumsily layer in here is that there was some sort of synthetic life form rebellion on Mars. And uh, leading to a ban of them, which is all very sort of Blade Runner, isn't it? Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And where did these synthetics come from, given that there was only one data? Yeah, well, they're clearly not as advanced as soon time. Again, it would have been nice to have seen one, yeah. but they're not. Later on, it's made clear they can't make them sentient at the very least. Oh, anyway. and unless they're like Index, 
But then if there's a ban on synthetics, why is there index? What? Oh, no, she's a hologram. Right. She phases in and out. So, okay. Yeah. Then there's something about Picard quitting Starfleet because they didn't rescue survivors or something, which sounds so un-Starfleet. I mean, they need to give some sort of reason for that. Can't be because they're foreign, because that's why Starfleet's made up of loads of different races anyway. Well, they they were talking about, you know, the Federation's oldest enemy. Yeah, they, they kind of seem to jump from that to to then the synthetic rebellion, and then then he was talking about rescuing survivors, so I presume that was from Mars. Yeah. Uh, rather than going back to, you know, that that be really just that whole interview scene really didn't work. Basically, no. I I was just too distracted by the whole hmm. gimmick of it yeah. to really pay much attention to the content. And I'm too distracted by the dog snoring. Stop it, you. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, our, our mystery lady, uh, who we find out later is called Dodge, travels to Chateau Picard. Somehow we don't see how, because uh, she was in Boston before. But hey. And tells him and us what we've already seen over a long period of time. And he's like, oh, come on. Yeah. Bit of a drag. Show, don't tell, folks. In his dreams, Picard, now in the next generation uniform, approaches Data, who is likewise attired and painting. And uh, the android asks him to finish a painting of a woman with a blank face. Which turns out to be a painting above Picard's fire in his home. Then uh, the captain schleps off to Starfleet. I suppose we call him the Admiral now, get used to that. In Starfleet archives in San Francisco. You know it's San Francisco because of the ubiquity opening shot on the bridge. And why is it taking me 46 years to ask this question? Why is it called the Golden Gate Bridge when it's bloody red? (laughs) That's it's not golden at all. Was it golden originally and went off colour? It's always been red as far as I know. Does it lead to a golden gate? A restaurant or something. I don't. I'm asking the question. I don't know. I only know what's at one end, not t'other. I mean, you'd think they painted gold, calling it that. But anyway. Okay, I'm going to look up why. Not being a United why, States. I'm going to look up why <laughs> is it called the Golden Gate Bridge when it's red and see what happens. The library is a cool environment. I like that. I mean, yeah. they really splash the cash there. I mean, obviously it's all virtual, but it looks really good. Uh, he appears to have his own section there, complete with a nice model of the Stargazer. There's the old Captain Picard Day banner. It's the model of his yacht from the E, which looks far better than ever yeah. looks <laughs> in the in Insurrection because the effects were terrible. Plus his painting of Darge, which was painted by Data and called Daughter. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm thinking, oh, this is Lau then. Okay, we're bringing back Lau. No. <laughs> no mention is made of Lau whatsoever. And we later find out this is something else, apparently. Abu. Darge calls her mum. They forgot to paint it gold. No, really? Is that it, really it, a it's thing? It's Primer. That was supposed to then have the gold on top of it, and they never got round to it. <laughs> Is that from a reputable source? Because that sounds like Feldercarb. Surely not. Anyway, I'm sure somebody from the United States will put us right if that's complete bunkum. Anyway, uh, yeah, she calls her mom, uh, who tells him to, her to go back to Picard for help. She does so, and he points out what we already know again. Uh, he... And uh, the, uh, one thing that all the way through, and particularly for this scene, doesn't impress, I'm afraid, is the music. Yeah. I mean, you get the occasional you know, nod back to the Next Generation theme, but mostly it's insipid and not at all memorable rubbish. But, speaking of music, Daft Punk beam in again. Yeah. <laughs> she sees them off, but not before one of them spits acid on her and blows her up, apparently. A bit weird, but there you are. And it turns out they're Romulan Daft Punk tribute band, apparently, so there we go. Picardo wakes at home, beating himself up about what happened to her. He goes to the Daystrom Institute in Okinawa, which looks really, really good. Yeah. And meets a very unlikely Agnes. <laughs> Apparently that name comes back in fashion again. Oh, well. Looks far too young to be an Agnes, doesn't she? Yeah. She's paid by Alison Pill. I recognised her. You do? Something. Yeah, she's Mrs. Mannix, Josh Brolin's character's wife in Hail Caesar. Oh, and right. She doesn't get a first name. It's, she's only ever Mrs. Mrs. Mannix, Mannix in yeah. script, but there you are, that's her. They're not allowed to build androids anymore, so her department is a tad deserted. They open a drawer containing B4. <laughs> we didn't need to be reminded of the existence of that, but never mind. At least they tried with the continuity there. Apparently never managed to develop to Data's level. Agnes name drops Bruce Maddox from Measure of a Man, which yeah, is nice. I remember that. It'd yeah. be nice if he crops up again with the same yes. actor as well. That would be really good. Yeah. He apparently came up with the idea of cloning Data somehow. Right. And he managed to create twins, so there's another one out there. And then... Finally, we're off Earth. I mean, obviously we had that opening scene with the D and we needed that, let's face it, because it's an awful lot of schlepping around Earth 
and particularly vineyards, mm. before we finally get some spaceships. Yay! And a very nicely designed Romulan ship as well. Splendid stuff. It docks with a ball cube. You know it's a ball cube straight away. I think it's supposed to be a big reveal at the end, but A, it already spoiled the fact that the ball, well, it's in the ball cube was going to be in it. It's in the opening credits. That's what I was going to say, it's in the credits. And, and it's just completely distinctive straight away. You know it's going to be a ball cube. Yeah. We meet Narek, who's a very English-sounding Romulan, so you know clearly Romulans have the same nations that we do, or something. Yeah, I know. You, you've got to have actors from this this planet, haven't you? So they're going to have yeah, there aren't a- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you need to realise, darling, it's not reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there aren't actual Romulans. But isn't there a sense, I always thought, and maybe this is just me me being very biased in the way I'm hearing voices, but Romulans always seem to have the same sort of accent voice before, didn't they? It was kind of sort of a, a more... Emotionless, but not as emotionless as Vulcans. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. No, because but... I, I, I can detect. Think, think of that one where Troy ends up on the warbird with the Tal Shiar. Yes. And the Tal Shiar woman had much more sort of emotion, inflection, and whatever. She was. She just yeah. seemed kind no, of no, normal. No, no, Romans are are more emotional than Vulcans, and that was that English actress, actress, and I can't remember her name. Caroline, somebody. She was really good, wasn't she? Yes. She had more sort of about her. Yeah, it but it, I don't know. Just curious. But we've certainly never heard such a variety of accents. We haven't heard an before. Irish one before. No, no, that's quite a thing, yeah. And and not one that... I mean, he's like cut class accent. He's, he's from Devon, apparently, originally, so... Hmm. Well, he could Not have... that he sounds like he comes from Devon. No. <laughs> Ew, don't you go stealing my cream. Hey, that's my Romulan pasty, that is. <laughs> <laughs> And Robin and Pasty is our title. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we meet the, the Dodge twin who's called Soji. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of her. Then we get a lot the long panning shot back in, from the cube, including some Robin and worker bees, which mm. was nice. And that's our episode, which, you know, it's, as I say, better on the second watch, mainly because uh, Sir Patch Jew, as we call him, his performance throughout is really good, so mm. that kind of keeps your attention. Uh, particularly that um, when he say when that opening car game, and he says I don't want it to end. That is yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah slight wobble there. But ultimately, I th- kind of feeling that there's not an awful lot of plot in this. It could have been covered in twenty minutes at least. I don't know. There's an awful lot of telling you what you just saw, and yeah, and then plot dumps giving you sort of what's happened in the in-between time between Nemesis and now basically I mean there needed to be something that, that covered it there needed to be a device yeah, I just I'm just don't wondering like whether the they could they have popped us more into the action straight away and then as the series goes on get fill in the back a bit because we'd be really curious as to, to find out what happened rather than well, we, this, the whole dreams thing I don't know whether that's supposed to make you question his sanity or whatever I don't know I don't think so but the, the idea that the the only bit we get of the champagne supernova is the sort of thing from the dream when it's outside the window, and we don't get the actual action. If you yeah, see what I mean, we that's don't see one of these. Synthet- I mean, perhaps they're holding off the synthetics for later, which would be a good idea, I suppose. But yeah, even so, yeah, it does. It, it's just not. Everybody was saying on Twitter how amazing it was, and and I think that's part of the problem as well. So I was expecting like the best thing since uh, Star Trek Two, and it's good. But it's not that good. I mean, it's, it is. It actually, ironically enough, feels quite next. You know, nineteen nineties next generationary. Not in the effects, obviously, which are absolutely stunning, yeah. as I say. And some of those mats are just gorgeous. But just in the terms of the pacing, and it's a lot of people talking in rooms, which is very next generation. I mean, it's a retro in a way. I like it as a as a premise. As far as I'm concerned, as a pilot, it's done what a pilot should do, which is make me want to watch more. Mm-hmm. That's all you can ask, I I'm think, curious, of, a, yeah. of a of a pilot, because I want to know who or what fucked up Starfleet if they mm. were like, we're not going to have synthesis anymore, and we and we're not going to rescue the Romulans and all the rest of it. Did, did they have? No, re- they did rescue the Romulans. No, That's but just they it. were going to. But they. <sighs> There has been a backlash since on the idea of... You can tell from the interview woman. Yeah, well, she's kind of ironically racist, isn't she? And it's like, oh, OK. And he was going, Romulan lives. He says, no, lives. There's a, mm. a sense to... Maybe the ones that have been rescued, there's unrest and they're not treated well, properly. Do you know see, what I mean? Initially, it's I assumed of... that it was them that had led to trouble on Mars, but it's not. It's something completely different. It's these synthetics, so... Yeah, I mean, there's. I mean, it's good that there is unexplained stuff because obviously, if they explained it all straight away, it would you be wouldn't, wouldn't watch it exactly. Watch. But so, but the one some some of the bits we've been given don't seem to map. It's like you know we've been given a, a jigsaw that's missing half the pieces, yeah, and the pieces we have got don't actually attach to each other. Uh, yeah, because it might be that they're making different jigsaws. All right. Think of it like three D chess. 
that you it might be connected but not in the way you think. Jim. Okay, maybe. I uh, I uh, I like Darge. I like the the actor who plays Darge. Uh, right. Yeah. I really like Patrick Stewart's performance in this. I like the the visuals. I I like the where it's going. The idea that possibly not just Starfleet but humanity has lost the plot because. The impression I'm getting is that the Romulans are not treated well and not being made welcome. And the two that he's got living with him are behaving like his servants. Has he also fallen into the same trap of treating them as second-class you, citizens? You, you got the impression they were kind of doing that out of gratitude. So it was their, their choice. Hence, they kept referring to him as Sir and Admiral and stuff. I, to me, that was just like, yeah, they're your servants. Mm. Which made me feel uncomfortable, but possibly was supposed to. Mm. So I like the idea that it's all gone tits up. I hope it ends with somehow being rescued because that will give me hope for our country at the moment <laughs> yes. um, and the world at the moment. Um, it would be nice if somebody somewhere gets impeached. That would be good. <laughs> so, you know, I enjoyed it. And in the same way as Patrick Stewart was like, you know, there has to be a reason to come back. What's the story? It can't just be more of the same. Well, this isn't just more of the same. I, I think what might happen is because I think the, I understand the first three episodes are effectively one, like the pilot or... Is, oh, okay. is the first three episodes. So watched all together, I suspect it'll be a lot better. Mm. And I think that's what some of the people went to see at the premiere. Oh, and the okay. cinema. I think as a, a 40 minute uh, episode of TV, it's missing something. It's the pacing is, is wrong, but put it together with the other two parts and it may feel like a, more I, of a sort of slow burn. More I didn't feel that the pacing, pacing was wrong. My only criticism is that interview thing because it's not Trek mm-hmm. and doesn't fit. And so I don't like the device they use. That really is my only criticism. Otherwise, I really enjoyed it. So I wouldn't say I'm completely blown away by it the way some people were. Although, I guess it depends what you're looking for. And if 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 you, all you wanted was to be able to be excited about Star Trek again and Picard, so for me the only downside was that interview because I suspect that the the servant stuff going on with the Romulans I was supposed to feel uncomfortable. I th- I think that was probably I don't deliberate. Know. I don't know. So I, I I'm not completely blown away by it the way some people were I wouldn't say that it's 10 out of 10 mm. but I'd say probably it's about 8 out of 10 it's just bloody good as far as I'm concerned uh-huh. but it, it was, certainly it's it's a very different beastie to Discovery which is a lot yes. more action packed and... but then it, it needs to be you, yeah, don't, yeah, want you don't want to be watching same, do you? no you would need to be watching yeah that's understandable d- different things aimed at different people I would say so according to Memory Alpha, during the 24th century, the term was mostly unknown, television this is, except to those who enjoyed the 20th century nostalgia. There so obviously are. they've got very nostalgic now at this point. But hey, in some ways they can do that because they're not bound, you know, it's not a prequel series. Well done. Yay. Yay. We're completely free. Anything can happen. Yeah. Excellent. We look forward to the next episode. We have heard from some other folk though on this one. And Doreen says, I enjoyed the first episode of Picard. I thought the first part had a nice next-gen feel about it, and the fighting and action was a good addition. However, when Daj flew up flights of stairs, it felt a bit like Star Wars or The Matrix. It was very Jedi, wasn't it? Yeah, it the way was, she did that. It didn't yeah. look really... But then she's an android, so I suppose it doesn't have to look realistic, does it, in a way? Because it's not a human doing that. There was a flashy bit that made me have to shut my eyes and felt it needed a flashing images warning. What was that? Don't know. Okay. I thought it was an impressive start. Mm. Yeah. Possibly it was when um, she, for some reason, exploded, having been had acid on her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it all sort of blown, whited out the screen. Yeah. yeah. Jeff has this to say. Well, that was the dog's bollocks. <laughs> Sorry for being so juvenile. Well, you're in good company. But yeah. I couldn't help but notice number one still had his original equipment. <laughs> 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 to concentrate on, eh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> In all seriousness, I'm quite intrigued by the story so far. Tickled by the deep cut continuity, yes. yes. And Sir Patrick Stewart is in fine form. Mm. Looking forward to hearing your reactions. Until next time. Hey, Gizar. Thank you. What did the Llama God make of this? Llama God's Log, Scott Date, Fikert, Urn, Fikasy Tree. Since when has there been so much politics in Star Trek? Yes, I'm going to immediately go to the inevitable discussion here about the thing that is going to stand out for a lot of people in this iteration of Star Trek. And I've got to say, it is something that Star Trek has never actually done before, and it really rocks the whole universe to its foundation, because this is just so out of place that it doesn't really belong there. And that thing is buttons. No, seriously, what, what the fuck's going on there? We've got visible buttons, we've got visible chunky great zippers on Picard's cardigan or top or whatever it is he's wearing. This, this, is, this isn't the clothing of the 24th century, where's all the fastening free big floaty shirts that 
they all had during the next generation years. Come on then, we want to see a bit of chest hair on people. We don't see buttons and things. That's so very 21st century. But yeah, I miss me. That did throw me out the scene a little bit because that's always been one of uh, Roddenberry's visions of the future is we can't actually see the fasteners on clothes. Although maybe that's because he was a bit of a pervert and wanted to see everyone in tight-fitting uniforms. Who knows? Anyway, one of the better revelations of this episode, though, is that Picard clearly has no actual lingering feelings for the Enterprise E. So hurrah! This is something that I was very pleased to see. When he dreams, he dreams about the Enterprise D. Of course he does. Of course he does because she is by far the most beautiful ship. But that's not really what we're here to discuss, is it? This was a very nice reintroduction to the world of the 24th century. Was that 25th century now? I'm not entirely sure what year it is. I need to go back and check that one. But a nice reintroduction to the future of the future. Finally, we're in the future of the future. We're not going back into the past. We discover the origins of things, prequelitis or anything. No, they were actually in the future and we're seeing the ramifications of past events. And despite my opening comments, yeah, the fact they're actually using the Romulan tragedy to underpin the story and to show the impact it's having on the Federation, this is something that's really wonderful and I love it. They're using one of the greater crises of our times at the moment, displacement of peoples, forced displacement by war, conflict or otherwise tragedy because we're in a situation where wars are still happening, people are still being displaced, governments are not intervening and climate change, things that are outside our control, wow, things outside the control of the individual anyway, they're totally within the control of the larger bodies who choose not to act but that's another story entirely. So yeah, now there's a question that suddenly pops into my head as I'm saying this is are we going to find out that the destruction of the Roman style was actually something that can be prevented many years before? I know we got the brief PowerPoint version in the 2009 Trek movie about the red matter and all that bump, but was that it? The oh, suddenly unexpectedly it exploded. Yeah, we're going to find out there was actually a corporate reason or some sort of bigger reason why it was seen to be more profitable to let the son of Romulus explode. Now, there's an interesting question that could go down, but I'm really glad that they're using that as a hook. And it's nice to see Romulans littered throughout the Federation as well. Is this the first Irish Romulan that we've ever seen? Now, that's that's interesting, I suppose. You know, but it was 10 years ago, they're always trying to pick up an accent. But yeah, the fact that the car's actually employing Romulans, it's like, yeah, there's a definite answer to the why don't you let these people into your own home mentality that you see a lot of on social media or you know, people who like to say things like charity begins at home but and then go ahead to not compute to charity in any way at home either. Yeah, this is a brilliant answer to that. In a way, this is a slightly smaller scale story than I was expecting, but very nice gentle lead in. It wasn't bombarding anyone with too much information, too much of an info dump to begin with, and that was really nice. It all played out with a nice little flavour of thriller along the way as we've tried to find out who Dash is. Her death was very surprising because I thought I'd seen her in the trailer and now we find out why. And yeah, love that we're coming back to the fact that Maddox was still doing his experiments, remember him? And that he's actually possibly created synthetic life forms. I'd still like to find out why they were still going ahead with that. Obviously a lot of research was going on post Data's death, or in prior to Data's death as well, that we didn't really see or hear of in Deep Space Nine or Voyager. Although you can extrapolate given the advances in hologram AIs that we saw in both of those series. But it'll be interesting to see if we do get some more backstory to the Roman and Tech and why a synthetic population was entirely wiped out. And I'm loving the fact that we've got the whole Starfleet Federation that isn't doing what it's meant to be doing. We're seeing again a theme that was initially explored in Deep Space Nine and then has been picked apart quite a lot in Discovery as well actually. So it's good to see that through line there of Starfleet not being perfect but choosing to do the wrong thing at the time it was most needed so again that's a really interesting story but in just showing how Starfleet is fallible because that's in a way a lot more of an interesting story than, than we had in Roddenberry's original vision if humanity is perfect what can you learn from that where can you go with that how can characters grow they can't so showing that there are still battles to be held and giving us messages that we can learn from these are really important things so I'm looking forward to seeing that and of course the best thing that the episode does is that it shows that Data's memories do not actually take hold in B4 so yeah good I'm glad that that character has come to a natural dead end because yeah I don't think we could have faced saying that so Data is probably dead unless we can find a magic bit of his catra. There is a bit of danger of that, so let's see where they go with that. And the Borg. The Borg. Are the women building a Borg cube? Who knows? I guess we'll have to find out next time. But yeah, this was a nice gentle introduction, not overly reliant on previous knowledge. Joe said she was able to follow along quite nicely. And yeah, setting up a new mysteries to explore. So yeah, very much like this. The only downside really that I found with this episode was the theme music. I can see what they were going with, but it's just a bit too gentle for my taste. But then again, it's not meant to be a proper Star Trek series based on an Enterprise. They were never going to have the full theme tune, so I guess it's fitting in a way. But anyway, yes, a very promising start and looking forward to seeing where this is going. So I'd be interested to hear what you think of it and what everyone else makes of it as well. So until next time, glory to you and your cast. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I mean, agree with the theme tune being a big disappointment, to be honest. Yeah. Yes, not an event, but there we are. Interesting hearing that no previous knowledge is needed to enjoy it, which is good news. Mm. But of our two kids, one of them isn't particularly steeped in Trek knowledge and she seemed to enjoy it. Well enough, so that's good. Yeah. It was surprising having Darge die. I did not mm, see that. Yeah, yeah. Did not see that Because we knew she was like one of the main yeah. characters. Like, oh, okay, they've killed her off then. Oh. Yeah, so I, I like that. It was a nice surprise. And good callback, Lama, to the whole... To Deep Space Nine, to the whole... The Federation and Starfleet aren't as wonderful as you think they are. Yeah... Although I do wonder if we, perhaps it's gone the other way, too far the other way now. You know, it was always far too squeaky clean and perfect before, and then uh, Deep Space Nine started chipping away, and then Discovery obviously did as well. And, but I kind of feel like, well, 
I just need to find out more about yeah. why they haven't been rescuing people because that really sounds yeah. so anti star it, does. it doesn't make any sense, but there we go. Yeah, you know, could it be a, a, a bad apple? Could it be... A, there's all sorts of potential reasons. As long as they explore it, I think, mm. as long as they don't just dangle it in front of us and then never do anything with it, that yeah. would be really frustrating. As long as they explore it, that's that's the main thing. I, I am also relieved that Data's memories have not take, did mm. not take in B4. As a, yeah, he can fuck right off. Um, <laughs> and yeah, this old, oh, you can do it from one neuron. So we, we are basically down to Data's Catra, aren't we, basically? <laughs> Possibly. Pretty know. much what it is. <laughs> yes. I, I believe the Romulans were deconstructing a Borg coup because there was something like a caption came up with some uh, Romulan deconstruction site or something yeah. like that. So, yes, I suspect they're trying to learn how they tick and are going to build their own Borg cube, maybe. I don't know. Again, I agree. It is somewhat small, much smaller scale than I was imagining. I was, mm. was expecting Picard to have got into space by the end. But again, that that's because might... it's in the trailer, isn't it? Him in a ship. Yeah, and uh, I guess that might not happen until the end of the third part, effectively. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Anyway, and uh, yes, z- zips and buttons are back along with Telly as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, the thing is, when they're shooting it and he's walking along in like normal clothes, part of me was like. Oh, he's wearing normal clothes. And then I remembered all the awful wardrobe choices from Next Gen and thought, maybe that's better. Because <laughs> it was all terrible onesies, wasn't it? Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> and I just thought, you know, I know it doesn't fit, but actually in the same way as the technology that you see in Discovery doesn't fit with the original series, hmm. but you couldn't really do it because it would look shit. I think maybe they've made a choice there yeah. that the clothing doesn't fit. But it was a bit shit, so they've made the better choice. And of course it wouldn't be a ball cast without Purry. So let's see what he made of it. Hello Orgs, Purry here talking quickly on the phone. I'm not actually away anywhere, I just don't have my computer switched on. But to talk about the first episode of Picard, which hopefully I'm getting in under the line for. Um, so yeah, I can't remember the episode name, but I thought that was quite good. This is a really different feel for a Trek series, and I don't think it's just that it's... So far, it's really not been based in space or on a spaceship, or with any space things happening. It's actually been mostly Earthbound, and indeed focusing on Picard, which is what I would have expected for a series called um, Star Trek Picard. But I think even the opening sequence and opening credits aren't your soaring, you know, uh, dramatic, you know, anything from kind of triumphant um, bombast of the TNG theme to the kind of more swooping Discovery theme that we've had. It's a very different thing, and I think it contributes to the feel of the show. Um, there's a lot of history that I think we're catching. And again, I think this is also... I'm feeling this as... I think the Picard series is likely to be one long story. Um, I think this is totally decompressed. I don't think there's anything episodic about this at all. I'm willing to be proven wrong. But I think what we're having here is effectively... you know, To an extent more... Uh, I don't know if it's going to be 10 episodes, but like a 10-hour mini-series rather than a, a sort of 10 individual stories. So I think it's kind of... To an extent, this is Trek... But it's a very, very different trek. Um, it's a different series to anything we're used to. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. And indeed, this whets my appetite. Um, and so, yeah, like I say, lots of stuff to look at, such as uh, what the synths were. You, I actually initially thought they'd be holograms because there was a bit of that in Voyager, but it looks like we are working with some sort of work. I liked the mention of uh, Bruce Maddox, um, the chap from Measure of a Man. Um, I thought that was a nice touch. Uh Continuity-wise, for those of us reading the books or playing Star Trek online, they have actually gone against the Countdown comic um, because the Countdown comic does have a Captain Data um, around that era. Uh, although I'm trying to remember when that takes place. I'm sure Andy will know. Um, but yeah, so, no, I mean, I really like this. Like I said, there were enough references. We get that glorious shot of the galaxy. It's lovely to see the, the galaxy class rendered in your kind of pin-sharp, crikey vision, modern special effects. And uh, that was absolutely glorious to look at. And Patrick Stewart is just generally brilliant. I mean, one of the things he said in interviews was um, his view of this was tempered. In fact, the reason he came back, he said, aside from presumably a you know, wheelbarrow full of money, um, was the idea of Britain you know, going through with Brexit. And he came up with this idea of the, well, not he came up with the idea of the Federation kind of after a major crisis, you know, this attack on Mars. I mean, Mars is basically screwed. Um, still, uh, you know, basically suddenly turning inward and he him saying that's not the federation he knew and I really the interview scene I actually thought was one of the top scenes in the thing. I did also like the fact that they acknowledge that Picard is old. You know, when he's running away he's 
you know, running up three flights of stairs and he's knackered. And it's like, yeah, I, I've never seen that in a film. And I just really love stuff like that. So, so yeah, um, I mean, I'm interested to see where this is going. I think we have a bit of technical babble in the, you could replicate data with two flutals of a floon uh, mixing together, but they'll make twins. Um, oh, I also like um, Picard's, like, I don't know if they're like his, his housekeepers, carers, but the, the two, I'm guessing they're Romulans um, living in his house. I thought that was quite fun. And so, yeah, um, I think I think we're going to get more flashbacks to the history, I'd suspect that, and I think we're going to get more to do with synths. And indeed, the fact that the other synth is working in what is a, an abandoned Borg ship um, is very interesting indeed. So, um, I'm in, I basically, this whole thing is I'm interested to see where it's going, and I think that's... It's a different trek, it's not what I'd be expecting, but if I want, I suppose, the downside is if you're wanting more traditional trek, you know, i.e. an episodic exploring a bright future, this isn't for, This isn't going to be it, this is going to be, to my view, a big long story. Similarly, I think if we're, if you're, you know, you want something slightly different but spaceship based, we do have Discovery, but again, it's not quite the same, but I think, I'm, I'm really interested in the fact they're doing something different with the franchise, and I think this could be a sign that we could get lots of different treks, so yeah, I enjoyed it overall, so um, I'll hopefully be able to feedback for the next episode when it comes out, and I will get some uh, Galactica feedback to you as soon as I finish watching the episodes, but until then, bye for now. Thank you, bye. sir. I think it will be one long story in a similar similar sort of way as Discovery is, to yeah. be honest, which is like, there's a, a story arc that goes through the entire season, uh, but then there are individual episodes telling individual stories as you're mm. going along. So I think that's probably the way it's going to work with these first three parts all being very closely connected together. Yeah. And it's interesting that, you know, Picard, li- oh, sorry, Patrick Stewart liked the story of Picard because it had resonance for him with the whole. Yeah. Although I think, and, and this may get explained, don't worry. I'm not saying this is a deal breaker or anything like that, but this whole thing about the, the Federation, you know, sort of turning inwards and stuff. The whole point about the Federation is loads and you know, it's hundreds of worlds. It's not just Earth or you know our solar system. So I don't quite know how this is going to get properly explained. I mean, presumably they've got a way of doing it, but well, I'm wondering if partly it's all as well connected with the Dominion War. Um, you think back to Nemesis, which they've referenced, so they must be treating it as canon. It is canon, yeah. yeah. Um, they they have that scene, don't they, where they're accepting that world that they never would have accepted as part of the Federation before, because they have to have anyone and anyone join them because they're all falling to bits and uh-huh. they're all depleted. Yeah, I'm not. Do you remember when he puts them beans, beads that look like a car yeah, seat? Yeah, I think on his that's head? insurrection, actually, just to really, insur- yeah, oh, to make it even worse. But there we are. <laughs> no, I, th- I think. Well, yeah, you could be right, but, but the- yeah, ultimately, the Federation can't turn inwards. I mean, the Earth could and break off from the Federation stuff, but it, not the Federation because the Federation's loads of worlds, which wasn't just run by Earth. I mean, all right, there was always more Earthlings than anybody else. Probably for budgetary reasons, and and we don't see very many non-Earth people on Earth, which is yeah. odd. There's one or two aliens in the, the Starfleet uh, archives, and there's that Tellarite, yeah. Discovery-style Tellarite, and and the part of the film crew. But yeah, it is curiously small world, and if if they're doing it just to match this idea that they want it to echo the insular insularity. Oh, I can't say that insularity. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I have not even had beer, so I can't claim that. Of of the, our current you know climate, it doesn't really work with the Federation. It's just like that's weird. Anyways, I don't know. I mean, when it also as well when he says turned in, it, it might be that what it is that they have s- ceased to do is go out and explore new worlds. In mm. other words, there's trading between the existing ones, but they're not finding any new ones. Maybe. From from the perspective of someone whose whole yeah, thing, he was an explorer. Yeah, yeah, that would be a turning inward. Yeah. We wouldn't see it like that, but the people in universe and he would. So that's a possibility. It is yes. In terms of old knackered Picard. Yes, it's good to see that he, you know, he can't keep up. That would be unrealistic. But also, it's not just his age. He's retired and and basically sitting on his ass writing books. He's not in training. It would be possible for him to be fitter than he is through regular training and exercise. But he clearly hasn't been bothering because he's just been feeling despondent and writing books. Hmm. That's my my feeling anyway. Well, thanks to everybody who fed back, uh, particularly considering the sort of tight uh, turnaround. But um, if you've got thoughts about this first episode, do feel free to send them to us and we'll uh, share them on our next podcast where we'll be covering maps and legends. Oh, I like that. Mm, there we are. We'll catch you then. Cheerio, bye. Bye.
All music referenced is for illustrative purposes only and no copyright infringement is intended. Find our website at broadcast.libsyn.com And we have a YouTube channel as well. You can find the broadcast playouts on Spotify for your listening pleasure. Visit our Tumblr site at broadcast.tumblr.com where you'll find images accompanying the episodes discussed in this cast. Send emails or mp3s to broadcast at gmail.com Or you can contact us via Twitter on rev underscore org or broadcast ammo. Hashtag broadcast. Shut it down!